I was lucky enough to work with Jim Travers for a number of years. He was a journalist to his core. He was just so curious about everything. We bumped into each other on the road in Lebanon during the end of the Civil War, and um, he immediately struck me as the perfect journalist. He was very funny. He never took himself seriously, but he took the job very seriously. The stories that you're telling have got to be right, have got to be done with care. He was a great believer in being on the ground, in really understanding the society that you're reporting on. Context was always what mattered to him. It was about accountability and transparency and what is this decision going to mean to the person on the street, to individuals. Journalism that chooses to inflame rather than inform is more than destructive. It misses the point. Thoughtful public policy discussion is not just for wonks. How we think and talk about issues shapes more than what we decide or how we act. It determines who we are. But Jim was like a guy who was like a conscience to everybody. A whole generation of young reporters looked up to him. There was a flame and there was passion and it ignited everybody and he stood up for people. He was a beautiful writer and he believed that every individual had a story to tell. And I think that he told those stories beautifully. Jim's death was unexpected and a real surprise for everyone. And Peter Calamai and uh, Angus Reed, among others, came to us at Carlton and said, why don't we set up something in Jim's memory? And it coincided with a dramatic reduction in reporting overseas for Canadian publications. Fewer voices and even fewer points of view are being heard in some of the country's largest newspaper markets. Choices as difficult as war or peace are being made on the strength of narrow, sometimes superficial coverage. So we thought, why not try to set up a fellowship that would actually create an opportunity for a journalist to do a foreign reporting project somewhere. The Travers Fellowship is Jim Travers' legacy to us all. It pays tribute to the kind of journalism that he did uh, by supporting up and coming or established journalists uh, in their quest to bring the world home to Canadians. A decade on, it's clear that the fellowship has enabled an amazing body of work. Fellows have reported on the impact of Canadian mining. They've explored the humanitarian crisis in Syria and the human face of Canada's migrant worker programs. They've produced immersive work about remittances and vaccine inequality, and they've made a real impact on Canadian policy. I wanted to write about cluster bombs, which are this um, this horrible, inhumane, insidious, uh, mainly illegal weapon. To me, it was a chance to look at what Canada's doing on trying to rid the planet of um, these weapons. We followed deminers into the jungle. We, we went into classrooms and you know saw elementary school students being taught how to be safe. And we also interviewed um, uh, victims. After I went and did the, the fellowship, there were public hearings on it in the House of Commons. Canadian legislation got changed, Canada joined a treaty, people had to take notice. And that was just because people were explaining things to them in detail about what was going on. And we don't see that in journalism a lot these days. You know, unfortunately, we have a lot of problems in the world and it's really easy to say these are our problems. And I think it's harder sometimes to look at like, okay, what can we do about them? Childcare has been uh, a persistent problem in Canada. So I did report from Berlin, you know, talking to a lot of parents here, going to kitas, like daycare centers and things like that. And then I went to Hamburg just to get a feel for what their system was like at the center of this kind of policy quandary. It's really about families and people. This is one of the rare opportunities that, that I've had to do this kind of work. The key focus in this is what is the likely impact on Canadian public policy? How do policies affect citizens? How do policies affect, uh, in many cases, people who are underrepresented or who don't have the opportunity for representation themselves? I was following the the issue of the MV Sunsi, which was a ship of uh, Tamil refugees, uh, about 500 refugees who came to Victoria. Canada was looking at a uh, 
indefinite mandatory detention for uh, what it calls irregular arrival. So the goal of the series was to basically investigate Australia's immigration detention policy and how it was influencing Canada's own uh, proposed immigration measures. I've always been a newspaper reporter, but this was a multimedia project. The massive immigration detention center behind me on Christmas Island is where asylum seekers are held. I mean, it is not an exaggeration to say that this project was life-changing. I really think it shaped uh, the rest of my career. We're hoping to give Canadian journalists a chance to get out into the world and to bring back a story that may result in positive change uh, and better understanding. There has been the first decade of the Travers Fellowship, but there are many more decades to come. 